Hey, what's up everyone, your buddy Matt here. So a couple of weeks ago, I came across an issue that I've had many times in the past, and that's a dead battery on one of my machines. What I did was I just ended up boosting it, it started, I let the alternator charge it, and it was good to go. It kept on starting, you know, for the next couple days it was working. Then I left it parked for a few weeks, and once again, the battery was dead. Now, there could be a short on the machine, but I'm not sure and I just don't have a way of testing batteries to find out if they're actually good or bad. And it was kind of something that I always said, oh, those things are silly. I'm talking about an actual battery tester, not a charger, a tester. So I took the plunge and I bought one. Let's go check it out. So our journey begins at the local auto parts store. Wait, 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 auto parts store? I mean, if you're watching this video, I'm willing to bet you're probably gonna go on Amazon or online to buy it. But I'm not a tech genius like you. So I ended up going and getting a, a catalog from a local auto parts store. And on page 46, I ended up finding my battery testers. Now, it's not just a voltmeter, because if you go online and you check for a battery tester, you might end up finding stuff like voltmeters, just testing the voltage of a battery. These actually test the load that you can put on a battery and see how well it keeps its voltage. So you have different models. I ended up springing for the big one. Here it is right over here. So this is a 500 amp carbon pile load tester. Now there are digital uh, load testers out there that end up just putting a small load on it and then using an internal algorithm or what to figure out uh, how, you know, the condition of your battery. Uh, this is a little more old school. This actually puts a heavy load on your battery and then you check and see how much voltage drop you end up having. So heavy duty kind of unit, but not that expensive. I mean, I paid 120 bucks Canadian for it. Uh, this goes up to 500 amps. That means that you can test up to a 1000 cold cranking amp battery with it. This is a Rodak, but um, from what I can kind of see, they're all sort of, they all look the same. So I'm pretty sure it's all the same company kind of manufacturing them and you end up putting your brand on it. So you might find them in a whole bunch of different brands. Uh, the first thing I noticed when, um, when I took this out of the box was that this uh, indicator over here for the voltage doesn't go back down to zero and that's an easy fix. There are small adjustment screws right over here and you just, in my case, I turn it down a little up until, there we go, look at that. A mm, little too much or are we just looking at the, I think you guys are seeing the shadow. But uh, yeah, you guys are seeing the shadow, but I'm right on it. So it's right on the zero. This guy was already good. So this is where you see your amps. The way it works is you end up applying a load. You connect it to your battery. You end up applying a load and you want to go to half the cold cranking amps that your battery is rated for. Um, it says it over here, one half the cold cranking amp rating or three times the hour rating. Not too sure what that means. If I look at here, amp hours, and we take say 300 cold cranking amps, that's 50, that would be one sixth. So I'm not sure uh, three times three times the hour rating. Yeah, I don't really know what that means. I mean, if anyone, if you got any electrical engineers out there, or really smart technicians, why don't you go ahead and leave that in the comments. Let me know how that works. Another question I have is, it says you can check uh, batteries, obviously, but alternators, regulators, okay. I mean, there's a, there's a small chart over here for it. Starters, how would I go ahead and test a starter on this? Would I put this in series in my starter circuit and check and see how much amperage it's pulling? I don't know if it works that way. Um, one thing I want to note is that, you know, the construction is, you know, for the price, very decent. Um, right over here, you can see there's a small green wire that goes off to the other the other prong on this side. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is I thought that was standard, but I got scammed, people. I got scammed. On a side note, I was at an auction a couple years ago and I had to start a machine that was dead and I didn't have any booster cables. So I went out to Canadian Tire and I bought the cheapest set of booster cables there were. These are them right over here. And I've used these a ton of times. And when you're jumping something, it doesn't really matter because you sort of put it right on the pole and you got a good connection. But I was checking, I think I was checking a solenoid. Yeah. I was checking one of these throttle solenoids. So I would just bump up the, uh, the contacts positive and negative. And I didn't realize 
But if you look at this one, oh, hold on, this is my charger. If you look at this guy over here, it's connected to the big blue wire, but on the other side, it's just riveted to the handle. And you would think that the handle would conduct electricity, but it doesn't. This prong over here does absolutely nothing. I mean, if you put your multimeter on it, you can check and see that there's continuity between here and the wire. You even get it all the way up to the pin, but from the pin to here, there's nothing. So that's just a silly little side note. Watch out for booster cables that have this kind of decorative prong on it that actually doesn't do anything. Rodak, however, they did it. They put a they put a small wire that kind of brings it over. So at least you can you actually can benefit from both of these little jaws. Silly little side note. So let's go ahead and see this thing in action. So this will be our first culprit right over here. This is the battery in question that I mentioned that you know a few weeks ago I would find it dead, I'd charge it or I'd boost it, charge it up, it would be good for a few starts and then it would, if it would sit for a little while, it wouldn't work. So let's check it out. Um, this is a 700 cold cranking amp battery, meaning that we want to set our, um, we want to load it up to 350 cold cranking amps. That's the bottom blue line over here. So you kind of start fully unwound at zero and let's check it out. We'll hook it up and I'll show you how it works. Positive to positive, uh, negative to negative. Now, contrary to maybe the digital ones, you wanna have a good connection because you're actually gonna be putting, you know, several hundred amps of load on the battery. So just like a starter would do, you're getting a lot of load, so. All right, so the first thing we notice is that it seems like our battery's okay. It's showing about 12 and a half volts. So the top uh, bar, when it says battery test, there's a green area. Now, the second, the second bar over here is the one that kind of tells you if you got to charge it or not. And we're right on the line. So if we end up getting a, a, a bad result, well, maybe we'll give it a charge, make sure it gets into this green section over here, and then retest it. Another thing you might want to notice is that there is a bit of a scale or a graduation. Uh, the colder your battery is, the more you're allowed to let the voltage drop occur. So, you know, if your battery's at 21 uh, degree C or 70 Fahrenheit, you don't wanna go too much below 10 volts. But, you know, if you're at zero Fahrenheit, you know, that's minus 18 Celsius, it'll let you go all the way down to about 8.75 volts and still your battery would be okay. So without further ado, let's start loading it up. So start turning it. Here we go, the needle's coming up over here. So we'll go up to, we got 300 and 350. It starts screaming because it's telling you this battery has to be replaced. So let's remove the load. So what happens is it appears to have an alarm. As soon as you fall into the red zone, it'll start telling you, okay, shut it off. I mean, this battery's toast in our case. We'll give it a charge and see uh, if we can save it. Um, what I also understand, hey, 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 I did it, I did it, I did it. Okay. Um, what I also understand is that if your battery does stay in the green, uh, there's a 15 second automatic timer that'll beep and let you know, okay, the test is done. If it didn't drop into the red, you know your battery's good. Let's get this guy on a charger. And in the meantime, we'll test another battery. So we got this guy on the charge. If you notice, the, uh, the charger's kind of saying that it's at the 75%, so it's flashing. Uh, one thing that I'd, I'd notice is sometimes you'd have a battery that seemed like it didn't work, and you'd put it on the charger and it would right away go up to 100 and it would just stay there. And then you'd sort of wonder like, does that mean the battery's no good if the charger thinks it's full? And these are supposed to be these like, it's a genius charger, so supposed to be wicked smart. Um, but you know, I, I, I don't really understand sometimes, you know, a kind of a dead battery or a battery, you know, doesn't really work well, won't end up charging. It'll go up to a hundred, at least now with my new tester, I can check and see officially, uh, if it's good or not. Why don't we try out this guy? Is this a brand new battery? Sure. Looks like it is. Let's give it a try. So is this battery brand new? It's a bit of a trick question. It sure looks like it is, but it's not. This is out of a 2015 uh, European SUV, and this is actually an old battery. The reason why it looks so good is because this battery was inside the car, I think under the seat, so 
pulled it out. Looks like it's brand spanking new. It's an 850 uh, cold cranking amp. I think that's like a 520 amp, and I think this is 850 cold cranking. We'll give it, we'll give it like 425 and see how it fares with the carbon pile load tester. So we're unloaded now. We'll hook it up. Cling. We look at it. Uh-oh. Okay, so this guy, right off the bat, we can see that um, we got under 12 volts and it's telling us to charge it. So we should not perform the load test on it, but we're gonna perform it anyway. So let's crank it up to uh, 425 amps, nice and quick. Oh, it doesn't even wanna go there. It's just dropping, dropping. Yeah, so, so let's get this guy on the charger um, once the other one's finished and see what's going on. But, uh, you know, I'm, I was kind of surprised because, like I said, this, is a, like, this car was like five years old and it didn't have, it wasn't one of those, you know, when it stops at a red light and the engine turns off and it starts again and you're always, I mean, I don't understand why this battery would be no good anymore. I mean, I got a 2008 Toyota Yaris with the, uh, with, with the still the original battery in it, but I guess, uh, I guess this old beast kind of died before its time. Okay, so I was quick to say that my 2008 Toyota Yaris had a good original battery in it, but is it actually good or is it just the fact that the engine is so small and so easy to start that this thing can be in horrible, horrible condition and I wouldn't even know it. Let's give it a test. So first things first, let's check and see. We'll get this grime off. Uh, this is 340,000 kilometers worth of grime. And we're looking at, what do we see here? Cold cranking amps, 550. So what's that? 225 and this little baby battery. So we're gonna go 225. Let's hook it up. Bing. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So we're under 12. And now let's start cranking up. Cranking it up. 225. It's holding. It's holding, let's see, 15 second timer and we're good. So sure enough, um, yeah, like 12 year old original battery uh, in a Toyota Yaris with 340,000 kilometers. Um, holding them good, all right, cool. So what exactly is a carbon pile? From what I understand, it's like a stack of carbon discs or some material disc i'm guessing carbon right because it's a carbon pile and that stack as you apply pressure to it or remove pressure you end up changing the resistance of that circuit so this guy here basically just you know applies pressure or removes pressure from a big pile of carbon discs you can kind of see it on the side um you see these kind of discs in there so uh I'm guessing, you know, again, if there's an electrical engineer out there, someone who knows what they're talking about more than me, um, you know, Ohm's law, right? V equals IR uh, for a fixed voltage, 12 volts. Uh, if I vary the resistance, I think the amperage is gonna vary in the opposite direction. So I'm guessing that basically when you wanna increase your amperage, you're decreasing your resistance in that carbon pile. I think, I mean, if anyone can confirm that, greatly appreciate it. Just pop it down in the comments below. Uh, always appreciate it. Uh, if you guys wanna take a second to subscribe, that would be absolutely awesome. You don't have to, it would just be cool. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. So carbon pile battery tester. Okay, so back to this uh, this shenanigan over here. Uh, you know, when I was talking about strange things that occur with these batteries and the chargers and stuff, um, I ended up disconnecting the charger because it was making a lot of noise uh, while I was filming this guy. So this thing was off for like 10 minutes. And if you recall, it was flashing 75%. When I came back and I plugged it back in, boom, right away, 100%. This guy shuts off. So is this thing properly charged? I doubt it, but now we have a way to see. Let's get it back on the bench. Okie dokie, so charger says 100. It's only been on there for a couple seconds and then it was off and then it said everything was all good. Let's make sure this guy's fully down. Click. So we're right on the line. 
uh, I think like we were before, and this guy was the 700, so we'll go up to 350. Let's see. Come on. 350. Nope. It's not beeping though. Okay, now it's beeping, but uh, yeah, so 350, no likey. Um, you know what? Let's give it a load so we can try draining it a bit, right? We'll give it like a 300 amp load. You can feel the heat coming off of that carbon pile. Yeah, I don't want to burn anything out, so. All right. Now I guess we'll get it back on the charger. You know what we'll do? Let's hook this guy up to like not one of the intelligent chargers. Let's hook it up to a stupid charger and see if that changes anything. So sometimes when I uh, lose faith in technology, I end up reverting back to these good old things over here. Uh, I kind of figure you're kind of just forcing voltage on it. Um, I don't know. Am I right? Am I wrong? I guess we'll never know. So that and we'll get it to 12 volts 10 amps yeah we'll give it a quick charge it's pulling about it's pulling about uh i don't know three or four amps we'll just leave it we'll just leave it with that so this guy's just gonna this guy's just gonna send it you know current and the battery will take what it wants and we'll see maybe that's better and then meanwhile this guy over here is getting the uh, is getting the vip treatment uh, started out at 55 or 50 percent and now it's flashing 75. another option we have on um on these batteries is you can go to like these rescue modes or what you know this guy's got the uh i don't know this little cross that's kind of like the battery saving mode and i know you can do these sort of i don't know you de decalcify the battery or whatever you can do these kind of fancy things with these chargers so i do them sometimes i'll do the uh i'll get an old battery and i'll i'll give it the old cross and uh, sometimes it does an okay job you know if you're doing it for yourself and it doesn't really matter if you have a dead battery i mean if you get away with it that's fine if you're doing it for machines that are either client machines or rental machines or machines that you know they got to kind of work <laughs> uh, you're counting on them uh, you're better off just going out and making sure you have a good battery in it. You know, these, this is kind of all fun and games, but, you know, these batteries are pulled out of service. Uh, you know, will most probably get recycled uh, because I have no use for a bunch of, uh, you know, half good or quarter good batteries around my place. I got enough crap around here as it is. Um, I don't need a big pile of dead batteries. One thing I'd like to note though, uh, this happened to me, uh, well, I guess a long time ago, 20 years ago when I was working in a little tool rental uh, shop, uh, left the, you know, kind of like a so-so a battery or an unknown condition battery on a charger, sort of like this, and uh, came back the next morning and there was just this fume of toxic smoke. The battery was sort of, I don't know, boiling and auto-destructing and doing all kinds of weird stuff. So, you know, you got to keep an eye on these chargers. Like, don't just take a battery. Uh, I think whether it's good or bad, don't just take a battery, hook it up to a charger, especially these old guys that are not, you know, they're, they're, they're not genius or they're not wicked smart chargers, you know. Uh, and you just leave them there for like two or three days. You know, if you come back, if it's in your shed or if it's in your garage and you just come back a couple of days later, uh, you know, if the thing hasn't burned down, you might realize that it smells like toxic fumes. So, you know, it shouldn't do it, but you never know with these old guys what can happen. So, uh, you know, you better be safe than sorry, folks. Okay, so these two bad boys have been charging. Um, this guy on the smart charger uh, basically went up to 100, I mean it started, that's at low, and it went up to 100, it's been on here for probably about a day, and uh, the charger sort of just shuts itself off. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's get the, uh, the cables on it, ding. We're just on the verge of saying it's gotta be charged. So let's give it, uh, what do we say, this guy here was 425? Yeah, 425, all right, let's go. 425, let's see. It's holding. All right. Well, it made it. Surprisingly, it made it. So maybe this guy still has some life in it after all. Let's move on to this guy. This is the uh, this is the one that uh, I ended up putting on my 
on my fixed charger. Uh, again, it was on here for about a day and uh, the amperage went right down to zero, meaning it wasn't really pulling anything more. So negative and positive. And let's see. All right, so now we're in the, this one's definitely in the okay. Let's, uh, let's load it up. This guy was 350, so 350. It's holding, but it's dropping. Oh, yeah, that was a close one. That was a close one. Dropping off. It was dropping off, and uh, yeah, so it just started beeping right when it hit the replace. So I think this guy's pretty much borderline. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take this one, and we're going to put it on that, uh, that, that safety charge. No, not safety charge. Health health charge or rescue charge, whatever, it, to remove the sulfur from it. So we'll do that and then we'll see if that improved our, our fate. As for this one, we'll call it good. All right, so the, uh, the recovery charge is now complete. Uh, this guy flashed a bunch of times while it was doing the recovery. And then at the end, it ends up doing another charge and it went back up to 100. I think that means that if it didn't go back into standby mode, it means that it was a success and that it did manage to liberate a little bit of space to add a little bit more charge into that battery. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it another test. All right. So once again, we're still right on that line over here, but we're showing like, you know, 12.8 volts loaded up to 350 and let's see how it handles it. 350. We're holding, we're holding, looking good folks, looking good. It did it. So it held the charge up until uh, up until the little timer beeped or what, and uh, it was still in the green. So I guess we uh, we recovered this one as well. So I'm up two batteries, two uh, two spare batteries. But uh, yeah, impressive, impressive little contraptions. All right, so that's it, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Carbon pile battery tester. Stay tuned for the next one. Signing up. Thank you.